So during the Road Glide refresh project, one of my goals has been to start changing some of the chrome over to black. It's going to be very difficult to get all of it swapped over, but a little bit here and there is the way I'm attacking it. So in today's episode, we're addressing the crash bars, and that brings us to the issue of the twin-cooled Road Glide, because we need to deal with these lowers to get the front crash bars off. That's the first step that we're gonna work out. As far as the rear crash bars go, I'm just doing away with them all together. I was considering doing extended side covers on the bike. And once I realized that I wasn't gonna be able to run saddlebag guards, I was like, nah, we're not gonna do the extended side covers. But now that I've got these extended saddlebags on, I'm looking at the saddlebag guards and I'm saying like, they're not gonna do any good anyways. Because if the bike tips over, the bottom of the bags are screwed no matter what. These saddlebag guards are not protecting the extended bags at all. So I'm doing away with those. I'm changing the front ones to black. That is the plan for this episode. So to get started, let's get these lowers off, figure all that out and get the front engine guards off, the front crash bars and just go from there. Man, I wish I had a motorcycle lift. We're gonna be swapping the stock chrome crash bar out with this black crash bar from Hogworks. And just like everything else I've seen from Hogworks so far, this is flawless. Like, it's beautiful. And granted, it's not the most noticeable thing on the bike. Black is gonna be awesome for one thing. And it's gonna be covered up mostly with the lowers. If you were to really get down and look at this thing, you would not find a defect in it, I guarantee you. This is really, really nice. All right, so our first step is gonna be to remove the doors on the front of your lowers. Actually, do you wanna get some pry tools and stuff that are actually more cut out for this job? But this spot is all right, really just to use a screwdriver. There's not really anything here that you're gonna damage. This is just held on with these three clips. Now once this is open, there's a bolt right back here that you need to undo. I'm using an 11 millimeter 12 point socket on a six inch extension to get to this. Once you've removed that nut, this cover is pretty easy to come off. That's basically all that's holding it on there. That nut and then this plastic piece right here that fits in this slot. There is a washer in here. So just be careful not to lose that. Once that's done, there's a T40 bolt here. And on the other side of that is a half inch nut. We just need to remove the upper bracket that holds on the upper and that is held on with two 11 millimeter nuts. I just tied it off to my handlebars and that's just so, I've never had these off before. Once I remove the actual engine guard, I just don't want it to, to drop really because it's connected to all the lines and everything. So I just wanted to give it some support. All right, I'm gonna get the other side removed and I'll get back with you when we're ready to remove the crash bar. I'm using a T40 socket bit on an extension and kind of working my way in here to undo this bolt. Definitely if you wanted to go through the process of removing your footboards and stuff, this part of the process would be easier, but I was able to get to those bolts without doing it. I didn't feel like removing the footboards, so there we go. Now we need to remove these two bolts right here that are for the fairing support bracket, and there's two on each side. Those are 5 30 seconds bolts. All right, so this is the last bolt we need to remove right here. I did go ahead and kind of pull some of the stuff that was clipped to the bar off. So if you have anything zip tied to it or anything like that for lights or anything, obviously make sure you clip that. When we remove this, there is a few things we're gonna have to be careful for, not to disrupt too much like wiring and lines going to the front wheel 
and things like that, but I think we should be all right. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen that bolt and then finish removing the other two bolts that are in the lower part of the crash bar and then come back and fully remove that one. And I think we should be good to go. All right, that's a little bit tricky, kind of like one of those old puzzles with the horseshoes that my great grandpa used to have, where he had to try to get the ring off the chain. We're gonna go ahead and pull these clamps off of here. And boom, more stack parts to sell. Of course, I'll polish it up first. The fender cover was a great idea. Also, another great idea was tying the lowers to the handlebars. That's basically giving them the support that they need to stay there. So I'm glad I did that. Next part is gonna be just working these new ones into place carefully. Hopefully I have some good angles going on here so I can kind of show you how this is working. I think if the bike was lifted up, it would be way easier, but we have no lift in the Touring Midwest garage. So basically what you need to do is snake this underneath everything so you can get around the wheel. Once you're around the wheel, kind of start working this into position. I think if the fender was off, that would also help. So there are some definite things you could do. I'm trying to save myself some steps Essentially just being kind of lazy, which might be causing more work for myself. This tab here sort of gets in the way a little bit. So getting that above this cover here, this cooler cover, kind of started in between, right? Now we're gonna to attach the top first, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get that kind of into place first. And really, once you get it behind these fairing supports, they're gonna kind of hold it. All right, so I had to fight with it a little bit just to get the bolts lined back up, get things kind of back into place somewhat. So that was a little bit frustrating, but my buddy Dominic stepped over and I put him to work and took like 30 seconds once I had a guy on each side. So you might find that to be a thing that if you have an extra set of hands, it goes a lot easier. But really once he gets one side lined up then the other side's easy so really it could go either way for you swapped out the chrome for black on the engine guards honestly that wasn't as bad as i thought i was a little bit concerned about how those lowers came off but they come off very easily enough to do that project anyways i've decided i'm gonna leave the saddlebag guards for now i'm gonna have to think about those saddlebag guards for a little while because I do have the bags that go on those and sometimes I use those for trips so I really have to decide what I want to do if I'm just going to get rid of them all together and forget about it or just exactly I'm not sure but we got the main part of the project done for the day so hopefully that helped hopefully it was interesting I don't know it was probably a bit scattered thanks a lot guys stay safe out there as always we'll catch you in the next video from touring Midwest.